Good afternoon, Internet. Today, we're going to start off by watching a small snippet from a Luke Smith live stream that he recorded on April the 16th. We're going to, well, I'm going to address something he says just at the end of this snippet. Mounted Scopes um, says, any opinion on the Rust language? Uh, First-class docs, crates, and the obvious features of safe code make it seem appealing. Well, two things about Rust, even without, I don't know any Rust, but two things that I can't help notice about it. Firstly, despite, uh, okay, I will say Rust is like a cult. It's the only language that's really like that. Rust people are always doing things in Rust. They're rewriting things in Rust. They're doing all this weird stuff in Rust. And uh, I want to say Stallman had... A post on rust a while ago like why it's like it, it has some like built-in proprietary libraries or stuff like that that i don't know i maybe it's rust i, I don't want to get it wrong but there are questionable things behind, behind it but i'll just say rust people like i mean if i were to use languages if i were to write a computer pro program um well for simple scripts obviously i would never use python i would just use shell but if i'm gonna write a program Write it in C or write it in Go. Okay, that's that's about it. And I've always had that opinion even before I knew any C or Go, just because those are the language, like C is Lindy, it's highly Lindy, and it runs fast and it does thing, things well. And Go um, is kind of like, it's a newer language, but it preserves, it, it, still, it still runs fast, it compiles, uh, you know, it's, it's more like in the suck list kind of, you know, because they have like static uh, libraries and stuff like that. Um, so like there are reasons to use Go, even though it's kind of a new thing, a new thing. And Go is like an easy language. It's like as easy as, not as easy as Python, because you do have to know some abstract stuff, but like between languages, it's, I mean, to me, there's just shell, there's C and there's Go and nothing else I'm really interested in. So Rust people in particular, they're very, they're always trying to push like, Luke, why don't you use this? Oh my goodness, use this program. It's written in Rust, as if that's some advantage over using some other language that runs faster than Rust. Or, or I mean, Rust, I think, you know, runs pretty quickly. Like, it's comparable to Go, I think. But um, I don't know. I don't know why people are so evangelical about it. And yeah, I mean, all the, all the people behind Rust, a lot of the people behind Rust, I don't want to say all of them, but many of them are your typical dyed hair, it's JW types. And I'm not quite sure why that is, but I will just say that that is like a giant warning sign for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm not interested in Rust any more than I'm interested in, I don't know, Lisp or something like that. I mean, well, Lisp is like, I mean, it, it, Lisp is not a very fast running language. In fact, I want to say Lisp is like almost as slow as it's it's probably Python slow or something like that, depending on... I mean, people study Lisp for, like, academic reasons. Same reason they study, like, Haskell. How serious of a language it is, I don't know. Um. Well, fortunately for us, he left the, uh, the ending quite open. But um, I wrote a small presentation, only a few slides, to uh, demonstrate the point that uh, Luke Smith is very very wrong about what he said about uh, Lisp and in fact what he just said about C and mostly what he said about Go can be applied to Lisp perfectly. Uh, so we'll just have a quick uh, like overview developed in 1958 at MIT you know uh, it's purely symbolic and it was garbage collected. Um, this is what it looked like Lisp 1 uh, lots of parentheses still looks quite similar today we'll see in a minute and then the uh, big change from 1 to 1.5 the introduction of a lot more uh, new features um, an important point this may be true this may not but it came with a compiler and then claims to be the first compiler written in the language to be compiled uh, however back when we had Lisp 1.5 something in the 60s, uh, yeah, it was actually very slow. It was really, really slow. Um, and then they attempted uh, Lisp 2, which didn't work. Uh, yeah, despite that, it's still 
Lindy. Despite that, um, it still has features you don't find in most other languages. Paul Graham has a has an essay called Why Lisp, and in that essay he talks about seven different features of languages, most of which have been uh, adopted from Lisp itself, um, and still uh, Lisp retains some that you don't really find, like uh, symbols and uh, full macro systems. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Scheme and Common Lisp. So these are the two main branches. Scheme is slightly older than Common Lisp. They're both uh, still use S expressions, they're still homo, -ic homo iconic, and uh, they still retain many of the same function names. To uh, the confusion of a lot of people, because you still we still use things like uh, function names car, which is the the uh, first uh, entry in a list, I suppose, like the first pointer in a list. Um, so yeah, scheme created in 1970s, much of the features are 1.5. Uh, used in the infamous book SICP, which was, which has now been revised, I think, to use Python, but it was originally using Scheme, and was taught to MIT first years. And it's considered the the best uh, book on computer science. Yeah, um, more elegant, but uh, less practical. And you can see it actually looks very similar to Lisp one. There is uh, the point. That it also retains like the single namespace, so functions and variables are basically exist in the same place. Um, but they, as you can see, it looks pretty similar. Um, scheme is very Lindy, and it's you know if if it looks uh, it looks very similar to its original uh, forebearers, I suppose the from where it came. Um, but it is the younger brother, and it's not my preferred Lisp. Okay, now let's move on to Common Lisp. Designed by one of the same people who um, worked on Scheme. Original design from 1984. Attempt to unify Mac Lisp. CLTL1 and uh, was still held as a de facto standard. Uh, this is just a bit of history. Um, we had DPANS Common Lisp in 1992. And then eventually we got uh, the ANSI Common Lisp standard in 1995, and uh, because this is a standard, uh, because Lisp is a standardized language, it is. Uh, I would personally would consider it very Lindy. Um, you'll see why in a minute. So yeah, standardized, loads of free and fast distributions: SBCL, CCL, CMUCL, uh, uh, CLISP, ECL, ABCL, commercial distributions: Allegro, Lispworks. Uh, it's multi-paradigm. Because of the macro system, you can basically support uh, any paradigm you want, um, but it comes uh, primarily built for generics, for generic programming, in my opinion. Um, it's garbage collected, and despite being garbage collected, it's still extremely fast. This is what it looks like. It looks very similar to Scheme. Still looks very similar to, uh, to Lisp 1. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, say, a forebearer of uh, C, which is Fortran. This is C, and this is Fortran. They don't really look very similar. Um, whereas Common Lisp still looks very similar to uh, Lisp, Lisp 1. So it's much more Lindy in this regard. Um, yeah. Scheme looks even more like the original. Um, okay, because it's standardized, we have code written in 1995 uh, that's still, well, standard conforming code written in 1995 was still run on um, code on uh, SBCL or, or CLISP or something now in 2022 when this video is being recorded. And you don't, we, you don't have to worry about actual horror shows like Python 2 to Python 3 version jumps. Um, and let's take a look at this. So old programs. So here we have a list program written in 1960 being run in a common list in 2014. Uh, <laughs> we'll rendezvous in 28 years to see how you can run a 1996 program, program in 
Anyway, the details of this doesn't really matter too much. I'll leave the link in the description. You can uh, take a look at this yourself. But uh, it's pretty trivial. It's quite trivial for um, for the man who wrote this to execute it. Let's continue. And now we have something that I think personally, if Luke Smith knew about, which I actually think he does because he has mentioned, I believe he mentioned using Lisp because obviously he studied linguistics and um, one of the places that people are aware that Lisp is used is linguistics. Anyway, let's take a look at the hyperspec. Look at this. This is bloatless. This is free from bloat. There is no JavaScript. You know, I don't even have Lispworks enabled in no script. Um, no syntax highlighting as much as that would actually be nice. <laughs> um, the whole, yeah, all of the Lispworks hyperspec is written like this. Okay, so that is um, very Lindy. It also integrates directly into Emacs, so you can, um, so you can. I use key bindings and it'll open the correct definition in the hyperspec. Oh uh, yeah, a very important point is that it's not a Google product like Go. Um, I don't know why. Well, I can guess why Luke uh, advocates for Go because someone wrote him a uh, XMR donation tool, which is useful, but uh, I really, I don't get it. I don't get it. For someone who advocates for FOSS, uh, why he would uh, support a Google product so vehemently, I don't know. But yes, let's get on to the main critique, which is that Lisp is slow. It's not. Common Lisp is actually really, really fast. So we have here, this is, I will say at the outset, this pretty, I don't think this is the best comparison, but it is a comparison. So we have uh, a web server built on top of a, C++ library called libEV and we have a comparison here that was taken. We have Woo that's outperforming the Go whenever the benchmarks were taken. Now I don't think this is the best uh, comparison because obviously uh, this is calling a foreign library but then take a look at something like NumPy which is very fast but that is also calling out to foreign libraries and Go will probably be calling out to some sort of foreign library or relying on uh, uh, C code or something, something along those lines. I haven't looked into the details. Anyway, um, so now we have a follow-on study. It's quite old, uh, done in nine in two thousand. Uh, called uh, Lisp as an alternative to Java. Now, in here we have the conclusion. As of JDK one point two, Java programs are typically much slower than programs written in C C plus plus. They also consume much more power. Memory, sorry. And now, if we take a look at uh, Lisp as an alternative to Java, here we have Lisp and Scheme here, the runtime, and the runtime detail in seconds. Uh, as you can see, it's beating C and C++. Uh, sorry about the low quality of the pitches. Now we have what's actually most important, in my opinion, is the development time, which is much, much lower in Lisp. Uh, this runtime performance appears comparable to C and C++. Low development time, Lisp has a much faster debug cycle than C, C++ or Java. Low ver variability of runtimes and development times. And this was actually repeated, uh, or his own contribution, Lisp as an alternative to Java, where uh, he did not participate in the study, um, but he wrote his version in Lisp. It took him about two, and a, two hours um, compared to the range of 2 to 8.5. Uh, now, so he has a note down here at the bottom. Then I realized I cheated the directions. Anyway, he's just reinforcing that, um, I guess, in this case, it's fast in terms of uh, the speed at which you can write code. Um, now we have an app, a much newer version that has been updated here. I will leave a link into this, but I will just summarize it here. Here's our lines of codes per solution. Java, Java, Lisp, Rust. 
our uh, input size versus max memory, input size versus runtime. Lisp is performing very well in all of this. Um, you can go and view the whole thing yourself. I believe there's Julia comparisons as well. And now on to language be benchmarks, which uh, are highly criticized, but really there's not much else we can look at. So we have spectral norm here where Lisp is performing. These, this is, um, this is CRs running on SBCR 2.2.2. Unfortunately, if you go and look at, um, oh, hello. I just rotated it. I didn't even know I could do that. Let me unrotate it. There we are. Sorry about that. If you go to um, this link, you won't find the SBCL contributions at the moment. There is a pull request uh, by the person who's written uh, the list contributions to have them fixed because there was something wrong with running a later version of SBCL. But anyway, we can see that list performs here. It's at the top. It's running about as fast as Rust. Here, binary trees, it's running the fastest. NSIV. It's up here at the top, beating Rust and C++. Now, if you go and look at all the others, it doesn't always perform so well. It's the uh, it's important to note that um, the people who have been writing, the, the guy who's been writing this, I believe he's been using a library to get SIMD operations in uh, Steel Bank Common Lisp in SBCL. So that's why it's doing so well with number crunching. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I hope that does demonstrate that it is very, very fast, but uh, it is important to note, you know, that uh, it's not slow. And the idea that it's slow is poppycock. All right. That's a conclusion. It's Lindy to speed ratio makes it the best programming language around. But yeah, in all seriousness, it's fast, elegant, unbelievably expressive. Most importantly, it gets out of your way. And uh, my suggestion to you, Luke Smith, if you see this, is uh, to give it a try and you know if you disagree with me then um, we can we can settle the dispute over a game of carry the rock or throw the rock or something well thank you very much everyone for uh, listening I'll uh, see you in the next video